This video is brought to you by the Z390 Phantom Gaming 6 from ASRock. Phantom Gaming, that's a new motherboard line from ASRock, but they're aiming to have sort of the quasi-enthusiast features available on a motherboard without it being an insanely, insanely expensive motherboard. It has two Ethernet adapters, one gigabit Intel adapter, and then the 2.5 gigabit Realtek 8125 AG interface. Now this is a new chipset. It's the, you know, sort of the new Dragon 2.5 gigabit chipset, but I've tested SMB multi-channel on this motherboard. And so if you use both ethernet adapters, you can actually transfer files from, you know, your, your multi gigabit file share, you know, your 10 gig file share or whatever you might be running at over 300 megabytes per second, like 325, 330, something like that. Windows file share, no problem at all. If you can use this motherboard on Linux, well, it works pretty great there too. Need to do a little bit more testing, but you'll have to stay tuned for the full review on that. That is the ASRock Phantom Gaming line. This is the Z390 motherboard. And I think we're gonna see that uh, 2.5 gigabit LAN chipset on other motherboards as well. Performance, computing. NVMe is pretty much the fastest option for storage these days. It's PCI Express on a gum stick, on a stick of gum or U.2, you know, M.2. And you know, I wanna go faster. Uh, you know at Computex 2018, just a few months ago, uh, both the red team and the blue team were showing off some insanely fast storage arrays. And that's been sticking in the back of my mind, picking at me, driving me insane. So when Threadripper launched, a long time ago now, I mean not really, but we tested two and four drive RAID arrays with NVMe. And it was insanely fast, but there were some rough edges, <laughs> there were kind of a lot of rough edges. It was a new platform, it's okay. It's kind of exciting to think that for power users, some of the lowest hanging fruit for a speed boost is to run NVMe storage in RAID. You know, RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 10, it's, it's got an option. There's a big part of Apple's strategy with the new iMac Pros because they have two NVMe type SSDs in RAID 0 meaning that they're striped together, so that doubles your read speed and it doubles your write speed. So, as well, read and write throughput, I should say. Now, unfortunately, when we talk about disk speeds, really there's two kinds of speed. How fast can a drive respond and how much data can it move per second? Those are the, the two things that go into the, the speed of the disk, basically. And that's one of the cool things about Intel's Optane. It's a type of storage technology you may have heard of. It's available in NVMe format, and there's new stuff coming like NVDIMMs. And it's not the fastest in terms of throughput, but on the latency scale, on the latency scale between a normal SSD and system RAM, because you know your RAM is fast, Optane is about in the middle between them. So it's a pretty significant speed up between you know a normal SSD, a normal NVMe SSD, and RAM in terms of latency. So sometimes you see some benchmarks refer to this as performance at Q-depth one. And what they mean by that is the performance of the drive when it's just one request outstanding. So it's just, hey, go get me a file. Hey, go get me a file. And it's not like, hey, I need this whole array of blocks, which is different because that can be serviced in parallel. It's just, give me this one block. And so things like booting and launching programs and stuff like that will feel faster on Optane drives because even though their, their throughput is lower, or th yeah, their throughput is lower and their latency is lower, but you want the throughput to be higher. Does that kind of make sense? So not to be outdone, high-end SSDs, like the Samsung 960, stuff from Toshiba, you know, uh, the OCZ stuff, they do stuff to make faster and slower segments of the SSD sort of respond differently. And the controller on those NVMEs juggles things. And so those NVMEs will typically run faster than the older like Intel NVMEs, which used flash memory because they have special software optimizations and they're doing a lot of stuff to try to bridge that latency gap. So curious about NVMe RAID that's built in on Macs these days, like I mentioned before, but most people would say that's overkill because you know a single NVMe drives are just so darn fast, especially compared to their SATA counterparts, that really, do you need more than one? Most people probably don't, but I wanna tell you everything that you need to know about NVMe RAID on current PCs because there is some seriously misleading info out there and there are some gotchas and there's some other stuff like that. So let's dive in. Both AMD and Intel offer NVMe RAID options on both their desktop and higher end platforms, but not all NVMe RAID is created equal. First, 
there are Intel's offerings. Now, my view of what Intel is offering is that generally it is misleading, it is confusing, and it's a mess. For example, Intel has just launched Z390, the new Z390 chipset, and the flagship 9900K, an eight core, 16 thread overclockable CPU. Every Z390 motherboard that I've tested has at least two, usually three, NVMe slots. However, all of these NVMe slots are connected through the chipset. They're using chipset PCI Express lanes. Those are not connected directly to the CPU. So your max speed of your NVMe array, you know, two working in RAID, is only about four gigabytes per second. And just one of these Samsung NVMe drives can do 3.5 gigabytes per second by itself. That's a read speed. So it's, it's bottlenecked pretty bad. Now not to worry, you can purchase an add-in card like this one, and depending on your motherboard, you can use this in one of the PCIe slots on the motherboard to get it connected to the CPU. But depending on the motherboard, not all the slots are connected to the CPU. Some of them are connected to the chipset, so you gotta pay attention to your motherboard block diagram. Now getting those NVMe drives connected to the CPU or part of the chipset and doing the RAID part of it, the RAID part is called Intel RST, or Rapid Storage Technology. And on Z370 and Z390 chipsets, you can run RAID 0 and RAID 1, and it seems not to care about what brand of NVMe you can run. And note that it's not VROC. Now, VROC stands for Virtual RAID on Chip. And that's an Intel technology. It's an Intel word. And that is, basically it means that there's some hardware in an Intel CPU to assist with RAID from NVMe devices. But Xerox is not really a thing on Z370 or Z390, the desktop chipsets from Intel. Now VROC is a thing on X299. We've got a CPU refresh for those on our hands, basically. Now I set up a two drive and a four drive RAID using Intel 750s and Samsung NVMe drives. And I basically, I failed. It was not a pleasant experience. I used the Gigabyte Gaming 9, which is, you know, did not offer options for slot bifurcation, meaning that you know, if I want to put two of the four NVMe drive, like, a, like bifurcation means I can run NVMe, like two of them in a by eight slot or four of them in a by 16 slot. And there wasn't really an option. I don't blame Gigabyte for this, but it is available on other boards. Now they offer several options. Gigabyte offers several options to allow you to pick which NVMe is associated with RST and which ones aren't. So you can run some NVMe's with RST and then run like an Optane separately, which is awesome because not every board has that. Now, VROC though, when VROC is in the mix, that's RSTE or Rapid Storage Technology Enterprise. And, but sometimes, not always, because, you know, Intel has kind of mixed messages, whether, you know, when it comes to this technology and how end users should use it. Because RSTE is labeled like it's a server technology, but it seems like some, in some scenarios it can be used by enthusiasts. The driver was actually super buggy and would crash on several different systems. So also I tried the ASRock X299 Extreme 4, the Asus Strix X299 Gaming, the Gigabyte, you know, a couple other Gigabyte boards, and the Gigabyte Gaming 9, honestly, is my favorite board for flexibility and options. It just doesn't give you the option to run multiple NVMe drives in a single PCI Express slot. So that's, that's probably okay though. Um, generally the Gigabyte Gaming 9 board worked better than most. Now to add insult to injury, if you're using VROC with non-Intel drives, it comes up in trial mode and you've only got, you know, 90 days and you have to purchase a key, like a physical hardware key. Now I'm not sure about the details on that. That's going to probably come in a subsequent video when I get some info or some other stuff. But I've been trying to purchase a key, a VROC key, since 2018 Computex, at least for a reasonable price. And I haven't found one. I want to be able to run RAID 0, 1, or 5 with these motherboards that claim to support VROC, but it's a little tricky. Uh, there are some guys that use little, you know, the 16 or 32 gig Optanes out there, but who wants to do that? That's, that's just academic. That's not real. So for now, I'm going to say that it's such a pain that you should not bother with VROC for NVMe RAID, at least until the documentation and the state of things improve. And it's really just, it's up to Intel to do that. Uh, as it is now, it's possible to set it up. Yes, I know you can. And I saw some really smoking fast systems at Computex, but across all the motherboards I tested, it's really just too inconsistent for me to recommend that for you. So, uh, you know, I, you, the other gotcha is you can't use the M.2 slots on your X299 motherboard for RAID. Those M.2 slots are not real PCIe lanes, they're chipset lanes. 
And so just like their desktop counterparts, you can't really use the on motherboard M.2 slots because they're not actually connected to the CPUs. If you do that, it's gonna bottleneck at that same four gigabyte per second limit, no matter how many NVMe drives you're using. We've run the benchmarks and really honestly, we can't get over 3.8 gigabytes per second real world performance from X299 using the onboard M.2 slots. And it doesn't really matter what board we use. So in short, NVMe RAID on the Intel platform can work if you put some work into it, a lot, a lot more work than you really should have to, but don't use the onboard M.2 slots and, or at least don't use more than one of them and beware of the other pitfalls that I've outlined. So let's switch gears. Let's switch to AMD. Everything's all roses. Well, things are actually better on the AMD platform. There's some gotchas there too. The, I mean, generally it's actually pretty painless to run RAID 0 or RAID 1 on the AMD platform, whether that's AM4 or, you know, Threadripper, you know, TR4 type sockets. Uh, maybe I, I, we're going to do a video on a four drive RAID 10. Um, that's something that's coming pretty soon. And that is insanely blistering fast, uh, but there's a gotcha there too. I'll come back to that. Now AMD provides two pieces of software, StoreMI and RAID Expert. Now I've done videos on how to set those up, so I'm not gonna go into it again here, but if you wanna learn how to set up RAID Expert and StoreMI, you should go check out those other videos. The only real performance gotcha on AMD is on AM4. Now AM4 has more CPU PCIe lanes than Intel. It has 20 compared to Intel 16. And the primary M.2 slot on AMD motherboards is wired directly into the CPU. That's where those other four lanes go. This is very smart of AMD to do this. That means uh, the secondary M.2 slots, however, go through AMD's chipset. And AMD's chipset for the M.2 interfaces is slower. So each M.2 link that goes through the chipset on an AMD motherboard tops out at only two gigabytes per second. So it would still bottleneck if you're gonna run RAID 0 with say, you know, two of those fast three and a half gigabyte per second uh, Samsung NVMEs, but it's 50% faster than on the Intel desktop platform thereabouts. It's about 5.8 gigabytes per second versus about 3.7 to 3.8 gigabytes per second on Intel. So it is, it's still bottlenecking a little bit, but you know, honestly, not bad. Now Asus actually deserves a special shout out here for the Crosshair Hero 7. This is a special motherboard for AM4 which has a PCIe switch so both of its M.2 slots go through CPU lanes. Now on that motherboard you can run a graphics card at by 8 and up to three NVMe devices at X4 or two NVMe devices you know at this using CPU lanes and still have another four lanes left over for another PCI Express device like say you know a capture card or something high end that's fast like that. Now Threadripper, on the other hand, has all the PCI Express lanes you could ever need, and pretty much all the M.2 slots on every board I've ever seen are connected directly to the CPU. So NVMe rate on Threadripper, generally, it just works, and it's insanely fast. It is, it's like a crazy, crazy fast. The only gotcha that I run into on that is RAID 10 on Threadripper with all four NVMe connected to the same Ryzen die, and this is less of a problem on second genera uh, generation Ryzen versus first generation, but it still, it can hurt performance a little bit if all four of your Ryzen, or if all four of your NVMe is connected to one Ryzen die. And so if you don't know about Ryzen die and like how Ryzen is structured, you can look at the output of LS Topo, the topology of the system to see why. Because it's basically two Ryzen 7 CPUs that are glued together and some of those in a good way and some of those uh, Ryzen dies serve some of the PCIe slots and some of them service the other PCIe slots and PCI connections devices in general. So you want to have two connected to one Ryzen die and two connected to the other for maximum throughput. Now on Linux, you don't need to use any of this. No story of mine, no VROC, no anything. You just use MD. It, it just works. Although I will mention that in Modus, the people that make StoreMI do have a really interesting tiered storage solution for Linux, and that's aimed more at commercial users, but it is kind of swanky, but that's a video for another day. I've got a copy of it. I've been playing with it. It's actually pretty nice. So there you have it. That's a rundown of pretty much everything you need to know, the current state of the art for NVMe RAID on PC, whether it's Intel or, or AMD. Uh, if you really are wanting more storage or more speed for your storage. Now, generally, I will say that only folks working with big video files, 
big virtual machines, you know, databases, super power users, those are only those are those are going to be the people that benefit most from from having this really really fast disk setup. I did think it was interesting that Apple is going this with this type of raid and all their new iMacs I mean the iMac. So I thought I'd talk about what the options are for the same kind of setup on the PC side of things. At least what Intel and AMD, what their idea of how that should work is of it anyway. I mean, there are of course other more exotic options and maybe some options that work a little bit better, but this is a pretty good rundown of the landscape. Now I'm hoping with the new X299 launch and the new CPUs for X299 that maybe Intel will loosen up on the whole VROC thing and loosen up on the whole brands and at least let you run RAID 1 and 0 with any brand SSD. There were, there were reports of that uh, and I was able to kind of get that working, but as soon as I installed the Intel RST drivers, or was it the RSTE drivers? As soon as I installed the drivers, it was like 90 day trial, you need to go get a key. Not super encouraging, not super encouraging at all. And for some reason, the Intel 750 didn't seem to work, but the new Optane 905, 900 and 905 did. But I mean, that's really punitive. So I don't know. I, I will concede that there are some stones that are left unturned and I might not have got something exactly right with that. But I wanna hear from you if you are running this type of a setup and what you did. And if you've been running the setup for any length of time, has your setup survived updates like the Windows 1809 update? Because in the lab, it hasn't gone well. So I'm Wendell, this is level one, and I can see you in the forums at level one text, forum.level1text.com. Wendell, I'm signing out, I'll see you there. Something, something like that. <laughs>